So, this video is taking a foray into the dark lore of Warhammer 40k, which is an incredibly expansive topic covering a multitude of media dating back over three decades, so this is quite honestly going to be a surface and light overview of one of the players in this turmoil ridden universe, the Imperium of Man. By itself, this is a massive interstellar power, numbering millions of worlds spanning all across the galaxy, so there are numerous factions, divisions, legions and branches of government within its shifting territories. This means that I'm going to be unable to address them all, and their differences, in a single 10-15 minute video, making this more of an overview of the Imperium as a whole as it presents itself in the lore, and spoiler alert, it's not looking good. The primary thing to understand about the Imperium of Man is the history of their Emperor. This giant of a man was alive in the 30th millennium and by all accounts a glorious and driven leader of humans who did much to expand the reach of the Imperium, founding the Empire at the end of the Age of Strife, the 25th millennium to 30th. He himself was an immortal human, and the most powerful human psyker to have ever existed. Psychers are basically creatures that have the ability to tap into the extra-dimensional realm called the Warp, which is basically a subspace, slipspace, underspace realm where faster than light travel is possible. It's also literally made up from the psyches of living beings and a sea of random psychic currents and actual demons. Then came an event known as the Horus Heresy where a faction led by his own progeny turned against the Emperor and attempted to assassinate him. That attempt was not completely successful, and the wounded, dying but immortal body of the Emperor was placed onto a golden throne, an invasive life support system that maintains him even at 10,000 years later, so long as a thousand people's life energies are sacrificed to it every day. There is more to his importance than just his legacy, however, as it is his mind that projects a means of navigation through the warp, called the Astronomicon. Without this, the Imperium of Man cannot travel throughout warp safely, so that would pretty much mean an end to their interstellar empire. Following his not-death, the Imperium began to decline. Innovations of technology were forgotten, colonies' levels of society fractured, and the Empire became less about moving forwards and more like maintaining a crumbling hold on the feats of their past. What rose in its place, however, was an increasingly zealous and strict adherence to the notion that the Emperor was divine, and by the 41st millennium he was seen as the God Emperor of mankind, whose will was law and rule a divine right. One thing that I want to highlight is that not every human is a soldier in one of the Imperium's various factions, and that while an incredibly skewed amount end up as part of a military because of the nature of the time they live in, there are still civilians. They live across numerous worlds under Imperium control, but the level of development, technology and involvement in Imperium affairs varies wildly. Some have basically been ignored so completely that, over time, the colony and its inhabitants have devolved to early states of pre-civilization savagery. Most worlds that are still frequented by the Imperium, or have ties to their greater empire, continue to fulfil a purpose – farming or mining, for example – while adhering to the one religion of the Imperium and avoiding all subjects that could land them and their world in trouble or accused of heresy. These worlds pay a tithe towards the Imperium, set by the Adeptus Terra – more on them in a minute – which is in the form of resources towards the war effort and maintaining their defenders. No world, however, is truly safe. Even vital suppliers, guarded zealously as any, could become a target for the forces of chaos in this ceaseless warfare of the 41st millennium. Civilian life is not a focus of Warhammer as a hobby, and therefore not really readily fleshed out as the universe itself is a hyper-exaggeration of differing militaries built on centuries of conflict, but this sort of fits with the setting. Civilian worlds are resources to be managed, 
or assets to be denied in this dark future, and generally only serve as the background or objective for a conflict, which is probably how your average space marine views them anyway. The ruling body of the Imperium of Man is collectively known as the Adeptus Terra, or the Priesthood of Earth, and it answers only to the Emperor of Mankind, although he rarely, arguably if ever, interposes his will on them. It encompasses several bureaucratic branches, which are overseen by the High Lords of Terra. Only the Inquisition, the Adeptus Mechanicus, and the Ecclesiarchy lie outside of the Adeptus Terra and serve critical functions to the Imperium, answering only to the will of the Emperor, or at least those who speak to and for him. The Adeptus Mechanicus are an odd bunch that revere the spirit of technology and pretty much an entirely separate culture within the Imperium, so if needed I'll cover them separately. The Inquisitors are those responsible for rooting out heresy within the Imperium's own forces, and because they answer to no one, sorry, the Emperor, they have practically unlimited access to all levels of society and a high degree of autonomy and authority, making them incredibly feared. The Ecclesiarchy, or the Adeptus Ministorum, is the organised state church of the Imperium of Man. Its missionaries are all across its territories, and do adapt the Imperial Creed for the varieties of cultures it finds itself in. So the details may vary, but the core of the Imperial cult is the same. The Emperor is the only true god of the humans, and any other faith is simply untrue. Heretics are to be put to death, while anything that is different is to be regarded with suspicion, while aliens are also to be killed. Your loyalty is only to the Imperium, and you are to obey unquestioningly all commands because ultimately they come from the Emperor and he is divine. If this seems like an overbearing system of control, you'd be correct, and it's been this way since the 32nd millennium. The various interpretations of the Imperial Creed don't even share a unified vision of the afterlife, because details like that are not as important as ensuring control and obedience. This is not just a view held by the state religion, entwined as the Ecclesiarchy is with the governments of the Empire. Most communities within the Imperium are effectively ruled by a higher social class that, in imitation of the structure of the Adeptus Terra, places select nobility over the greater populace. Generally, straying from this example is treated as heretical. Technologically, the Imperium of Man pretty much relies on the devices and designs of millennia-old weapons and infrastructure. This came primarily from the age of technology around the 15th millennium to 25th. It was during this era where warp travel was perfected, colonisation became an attainable goal, and the creators of STCs ensured a repeatable way to construct new devices. Standard template constructs were effectively AIs combined with fabrication machines that could construct anything needed, and to this day continue to be prized assets bolstering the Imperium. Extensive genetic engineering and biomechanical augmentation were also commonplace by the end of the Age of Technology. At the end of this age, much was undone by the collapse of interstellar travel along with numerous other ill-timed calamities, this turmoil ending only when the Emperor ascended to control and unify the shattered remains of humanity's interstellar empire. As he set about restoring humanity, he began to lay the founding for what would become the Imperium, and at the same time, the Warp Realm was restored, thus allowing for easy interstellar travel once again. Many began to whisper that this was not coincidence, but divine intervention, proving that the Emperor himself was divine. After all, he was immortal, the most potent psyker ever seen, and restoring the glory of mankind. However, he refuted such labels, which makes it even sadder that on his near death he was thrown into a golden chair, deprived of direct contact with his people, and eventually worshipped as a god. In many ways, much of the history of the Imperium is no longer known, or if it is, it is by a select few who do not share it. This is because of three main factors, the first simply being time. Ten millennia makes the Imperium the longest single government of the human race. Secondly, the constant warfare has destroyed libraries, cultural sites, and entire planets. Thirdly, 
the Imperial censor has taken a torch to records it disagrees with and sealed away others, altering its own records as it sees fit. What seems to be the case, however, is that the Emperor of Mankind genuinely wanted to restore humanity to peak as it was in the Age of Technology and decried being proclaimed anything divine. However, with every achievement attributed to him, from the unification of the Adeptus Mechanicus to the formation of the Primarchs and Space Marines, his legend grew and humans became ever more enamoured with it. When he would have died, he was instead forced to persist and maintain the empire he helped create. Those formerly under his charge lost their way, perverting his vision of unity into one of conformity, their faith into zealotry, their respect of new innovations into fear, and stalling the forward momentum that the Imperium had been making in restoration. Ideals of valour, duty, honour, and saving human lives still exist, but what the Imperium is now is a twisted, decaying mirror of what it was supposed to be, much like its Emperor. While there exists good in the hearts of those individuals within it, culturally the Imperium abhors development and growth unless it is in service to killing the Other, the Demon, and the Xeno. There is an argument to be made, however, that the Imperium has to be like this because the forces it faces are literally demonic hordes of twisted flesh, equally xenophobic space elves, and reanimated techno-zombies intent on conquering all. The Imperium of Man cannot afford to stop and examine itself, because in that time its enemies would exploit it and then there would be no more humans. The problem is that after countless millennia, this state of affairs has continued, and in the 41st millennia, there is still only war, and humans are in danger of forever forgetting their humanity, as they have already lost so much else. Thanks for watching this foray into the bleak future of Warhammer 40k. It's not an optimistic view, but that sort of gives it this grim tragedy and makes those heroes who do exist stand out even more. Ultimately, it's a setting for a franchise based on war, so I doubt it's ever going to change, but personally, if I were able to peer into the far future of this universe, I think the Empire would be long gone, and the only vestiges of humanity would be those forgotten worlds that were lucky enough to be ignored by not only the alien forces, but by the Imperium of Man itself. Oh, this one took a long time to script, so thank you for your patience, and as usual, I'll leave the vote to you guys what sci-fi culture I'll tackle next. So the choices are to continue in the Warhammer vein, with the Adeptus Mechanicus as alluded to earlier, or the more benign Betazoids of Star Trek. Votes are over on the community tab, so thank you again for watching. I've been Rick, and until next time, goodbye, and I'm going to hide from the Imperial Inquisitors.